Disturbing evidence has emerged that China is forcing women to be sterilised or fitted with contraceptive devices in the province of Xinjiang in an apparent attempt to limit the population of Muslim Uyghurs. A new report says other women are being detained in re-education camps if they contravene family planning rules. These new accusations are contained in a report by the German researcher Adrian Zenz from the US-based Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Adrian Zenz joins us now from Minneapolis. Adrian Zenz, welcome. So the Chinese government has already dismissed your report as baseless. Take us through the work you did to establish the veracity of the claims you made in this report? That is a very interesting response uh, because as in previous times, my report is entirely based on the Chinese government's own documents and sources. I was able to analyze official statistics which indicate sterilization rates. But then I was also able to delve deeper into government statistics, budgets, reports about family planning, about new policies. I was able to uncover evidence that those who violate family planning are sent to internment camps. Three counties specifically threaten such a treatment. But perhaps the most shocking revelation are very detailed targets of female sterilization in rural minority regions. And how did you work out this was happening to hundreds of thousands of Uyghur women? I might just read out one of the uh, paragraphs from the AP story. Uh, the state regularly subjects minority women to pregnancy checks and forces intrauterine devices, sterilisation and even abortion on hundreds of thousands, uh, the interviews and data show. H how did you establish that it was affecting that many people? Uh, hundreds of thousands might be an understatement because there are 15 million Turkic minorities in Xinjiang. And the government's goal in 2019, which I might add was very openly stated in their own reports, was to fit at least 80% of women with long-term effective pregnancy prevention mechanisms, which in these regions refers to contraceptive devices inserted into the vagina or sterilization. I also uncovered a specific data from two weaker counties that gave sterilization targets for thousands, over 10,000 of weaker women in these regions. And tell us about some of the individual stories you came across because you, uh, you analyzed data but you also did interviews. The individual stories, they clearly confirm the data obtained by government budgets and reports. People Females who were able to flee from Xinjiang testified that they had to attend daily flag raising ceremonies. And at these ceremonies, they had to chant songs such as, if we have too many children, we are religious extremists. If we are religious extremists, we have to go to the education camp, which means the internment camps. Mm -hmm. We can only have one or two children and things like this. And many other testimonies of forced sterilization and forced fitting of intrauterine contraceptive devices. The Chinese government for a long time had the one child policy affecting the Han Chinese too. What, what do you make of the Chinese government claim that this is all about equality? On paper, the Chinese government did make the law more equal between Han and minorities. Both can now have the same number of women in these remote regions. However, what the government is not telling us is, is the population uh, growth data, which has been plummeting dramatically. In 2018, in the Uyghur heartland, net population growth rates fell by 84 percent. That's not just the result of internment, it's the result of ruthless uh, birth prevention policies. And these policies all squarely target the southern Xinjiang regions, which are the Uyghur mi minority regions. Therefore, on paper, you have equality, but in actual practice, you have a program that fulfills one of the criteria of the United Nations Convention for the Prevention of Genocide, namely the suppression of births of the targeted group. How would you describe what is happening in these so-called re-education or internment camps? Internment camps come in different types and shapes. Some are very brutal and ruthless, designed to conduct interrogations and to yield information of harmless citizens, torture, is regular in these camps. Other camps are slightly more benign. They offer a small amount of vocational training. But even these camps, you have 
uh, strict punishments, strict routines, uh, daily life hinter barbed wire fence and watchtowers. And you have the incarceration of the largest ethnic group basically since the Holocaust, which is uh, frankly incredible. And now the evidence of mass sterilization and birth prevention on top of this. And you would argue this is a form of genocide? We've been very careful as academics, and I uh, would prefer to continue to be careful. However, so I have been calling this a cultural genocide. However, the evidence that I uncovered does point to the fact that we now need to think about the next stage because the mass prevention of births at this scale and also depressing the population growth down to zero, which is the stated goal in one of these weaker uh, prefectures, uh, meets a United Nations genocide criterion. We therefore need to take the facts seriously and clearly reevaluate what these uh, atrocities constitute. How would you assess the global response to this so far? So far, it has been um, absolutely disappointing, frankly. There's not even been enough of a speaking out. There has been a wholly inadequate response by the international community. Um, frankly, shameful. And I do hope that this is going to change also as a result of the new evidence that we are receiving. Specifically, what kind of action would you like to see through forums like the United Nations? The United Nations has a responsibility to investigate human rights violations and particularly to investigate allegations of genocide. This is now clear that this should be on the table. But also national governments, actually many national governments have an obligation to work towards the prevention of genocide, which means they need to launch a legal appraisal into the situation in Xinjiang. Many governments have not even arrived at a legal determination as to what to call this atrocity, if it is crimes against humanity, as the United States Holocaust Memorial uh, Museum announced um, earlier this year that the actions in Xinjiang constitute uh, crimes against humanity that warrant further investigation. Mm. Okay, Adrian Zenz, thanks so much for talking to us from Minneapolis.